Hello and welcome to this Astranti video. Today we'll be looking at a question from our 100 questions video series which considers some of the types of questions that you may face in your exam. In this session we'll be looking at a topic from P2 and P3 and that topic is stress testing. Stress testing is used in organisations to find areas of weakness in a system by putting it under pressure in a controlled environment. If you want to see the full video to test yourself out on the rest of the questions, this can be found on the Astranti website as part of our full course, where you can also find a whole range of study materials to help you pass your SEMA exams. But for now, let's jump straight in and tackle this question. And uh, this question is about a company called House Smart. Now, House Smart is a property development company based in Leland. And as part of their risk management process, they've performed a stress test on the company's strategy. And the three things they've analyzed is the reduction in the housing market. So they've analyzed a situation where the housing market declines because of global financial worries. Of course, as a property developer, that's going to be problematic. They've also analyzed the impact of a major competitor beginning operations in Leland. So a big global competitor that's now setting up operations in Leland. And they've also considered the impact of fluctuating raw material prices. So all the prices of the bricks, etc., that they use in their housing projects. What if the price was fluctuating wildly on a daily basis? And based on all these results, they've updated the company strategy to mitigate the potential impact of these issues. Now, the question we've got here, the requirement line, is which of the following statements is correct regarding the stress test that has been conducted by Housemart? So which of the ones are correct and the two that apply? So we're looking for two correct answers here. And before we begin, just to give a very brief overview of how you would conduct a stress test, the guidelines for stress testing. The first thing is that you have to analyze all the different risks, all the different issues in an interrelated way. Because in reality, one thing doesn't just happen in a complete vacuum. One risk will have an impact on another, etc. So, for example, a reduction in the housing market might lead to competitors looking for businesses elsewhere, or it might lead to fluctuating prices because no one's sure what's going on. So you must analyze it in an interrelated way, as in the impact of one risk might lead to a change in another. And, uh, for example, a reduction in uh, the uh, the housing market might also lead to redundancies. It might also lead to problems in sourcing land, etc. So there are risks that will piggyback on the back of other risks. So what we can judge from that is that we can rule out option B, that how smart has analyzed its risks in an interrelated way, because it has to do it in order to conduct a stress test effectively, and it hasn't done it. Because you can see that they've analyze the individual impact of a major competitor, the individual impact of a reduction in the housing market, etc. It's not being done in an interrelated way. Also, you must analyze risks that are both one-offs and everyday. And an everyday risk is fluctuating house prices or fluctuating prices in anything. And also a one-off risk would be a major competitor beginning operations. So if they have analyzed both the everyday risk, so I'll just write ED there, that's an ED risk for everyday, and they've also analyzed one off risks. So uh, option E, where it says they have only analyzed everyday risks, is also incorrect because they've analyzed the one off and the everyday risk. Now, what about the remaining options? We've ruled out two and we've got three left. And two of these are correct and one is not correct. And for a stress test to be effective, you have to analyze plausible risks. There's no point in a shop in the UK analyzing the housing market 
in New Zealand, particularly if it's a shop that sells nothing to do with house. What on earth would be the point in that? It's not a risk that the company will face, anything to do with the housing market in New Zealand. So are the risks that HouseSmart has analysed plausible in terms of risks for HouseSmart? Well, of course, it is a property developing company, a property development company. So risks such as fluctuating raw material prices for housing development and a reduction in the general housing market because of global financial worries are certainly plausible risks. These are risks that the company might face. So that is a correct answer. And also what we see here in the question, it was just a throwaway sentence right at the end, but it is very important here, is that how smart has updated the company's strategy to mitigate the potential impact of these risks. So option D here, that HouseSmart has integrated its stress testing into its planning processes is correct because they have taken the uh, results of the stress test and used it to positively affect the plan, to mitigate these risks. So that is also the uh, correct answer. And by the process of elimination, that means that Option C is also incorrect because uh, there are only two that apply. And if you're wondering, well, surely they have moved to a better strategy. But we can't necessarily make that assumption at this point. Yes, they have changed their strategy based on the assumption that some of these risks will happen, but it may not happen. They've changed the strategy based on these potential risks happening. But if it doesn't happen, then maybe it hasn't moved to a better strategy because it's then dedicated resources, etc., to mitigating these risks that it won't actually end up facing. So at this point, we cannot conclude whether the new strategy is a better than the old one. But what we can conclude is that they have analysed risks that they plausibly face and uh, they have also integrated it into their planning processes. So those are the two correct answers, option A and option D. So we've now come to the end of this video and you should now be confident in answering this type of question. Want to tackle more questions? Well, the full video can be found on the Astranti website where you can also see a wide range of resources designed to help you pass your SEMA exams. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more content, why not subscribe to one of our many social media channels? You can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, here on YouTube, where we have many videos on a multitude of different topics. Thanks for watching.